Okay, um, I'm here and we're here uh, with a collaborative project, WIT Waterford Institute of Technology and the Irish Prison Service. Um, our project is entitled Every Contact Counts, the Higher Certificate in Custodial Care, Building, Teaching and Learning Capacity. So just to go through some of the aims of our project, um, the aim of our project is to build a uh, teaching capacity and create a sustainable community of practice for the teaching and learning on our prison officer education programme, the Higher Certificate in Custodial Care, or the HCCC for short. It's a new bespoke programme that breaks new terrain and it is, involves an interdisciplinary teaching team involving third level educators and, and lecturers and also Irish prison service tutors who are experienced uh, prison officers who have gone on to teach prison officers. What we'd like to do is to build a team cohesion and build confidence in our teaching team. At the moment, there is a lot of informal sharing of learning. And because we have quite varied experiences and backgrounds between WIT and the Irish Prison Service, we'd like to formalise this process. And this project, this project will allow us to do so. We'd also positively like to impact on the learner experience through building the capacity of our teaching team. And finally, we'd like to empower our learners, which is our students, to engage in lifelong learning and personal development throughout their career and working lives. I'm going to pass you over to Colin to discuss the role of the prison officer. Thank you, Julie. <clears throat> I suppose, first and foremost, um, to speak about the role of a prison officer, we don't have to speak in the convention centre anyway, first of all. Um, it's, it's, a very, it's a very complex role. Um, very unfounded role, and a lot of people don't know about my role, um, what I would do on a general day-to-day uh, -day basis, because the community we deal with is the people that are, no one else wants to deal with, and they're the people that are behind the wall, and we deal with them, and we deal with in a true, safe, and secure environment within the walls of uh, prison, and as well as that, then we, part of my role is to care and rehabilitate that person, so when they come back into the community, their the society in itself is a better place as well. Me personally, um, academically, I haven't been in academic learning for about 19 years now. So, academically, I wouldn't come into this come into this job in HRC. I wouldn't have done a whole lot of academic learning. So, the varied role between each student within my class <coughs> was very varied between third level and leave insert. Um, So challenges I, I would personally have um, within the higher custodial care is that I'm from Clare, I have three children, um, I work in Dublin, I have overtime and I have college work. So time management and etc. travel, it's, it's quite complex as well as my daily, daily job. So there are many, many challenges that I face as well. Um, but going forward, um, the HCC does enable me to um, better my role within the prison environment. And I'll hand you over to Cahill there. So just to explain a little bit about the um, HCCC or the Higher Certificate in Custodial Care, um, it's a two-year programme. It's a new bespoke programme delivered um, jointly between Waterford IT and the Irish Prison Service since 2017. Um, there are currently 244 students um, on the programme and we anticipate registering 200 students a year for the next six years, um, in line with the significant recruitment drive within the Irish Prison Service at the moment. Um, it's very much a work-based programme um, with a lot of work-based learning. It's delivered through a blended learning format. Um, we're quite an interdisciplinary team. Um, there's over 30 staff involved in delivering the programme at the moment. Um, from a WIT perspective, that's lecturers from um, very backgrounds from social care, criminal justice, law, um, healthcare, sociology, um, psychology and management. Um, and as well as that, there are Irish Prison Service tutors who are themselves professional prison officers, um, and they are seconded um, into deliver on the programme for a period of time as well. Um, it's underpinned by a philosophy of uh, reflective practice, and one of the key aims of the programme is to um, instill um, instill a, a, a practice of uh, systemic evaluation um, within the prison officers. Um, it's also it's, it's a two-year programme over four semesters. The first semester is a residential-based programme. 
um, split between the Irish Prison Service College in Port Leash and Wheatfield Training College, uh, while semesters two, three and four are delivered exclusively by WIT staff in a Dublin-based venue. Um, uh, sorry, in a, a Dublin-based venue um, uh, for, the, for the rest of the programme. Um, So um, just in terms of what we want to deliver um, from Every Contact Counts, um, our main aim is to provide professional de development opportunities for the staff delivering on the programme. Um, that way we want, to build, we want to build team cohesion and we want to build team capacity um, in delivering on the programme and by meeting their needs, um, evaluating their needs and delivering opportunities tailored to their needs. Um, we want, also want to deliver accessible resources to both current staff and students and future staff and student, students. Um, and that really ties in with a core aim of, of Every Contact Counts is that we want to create, um, sustainability is really a core aim of what, what we want to do. Um, by the nature of the programme, our lecturers come in and out of the programme, there's a, a natural kind of degree of, of turnover there while the Irish Prison Service tutors are seconded into the programme for a period of time. So we really want to try and make sure that all the teaching and learning expertise <coughs> um, and experience that is brought into the programme stays within the programme. So by providing uh, accessible resources for staff and students, we hope to do that. Um, we also want to develop induction packages, both for staff and students coming into the programme as well. Um, and we also want to deliver um, and develop a, a model of sustainability for the programme going forward. Um, as well as that, because it is a blended learning programme, we also want to develop a sustainable technology enhanced community of practice then as well, and um, develop confidence and skills in our staff and students um, in engaging and delivering a blended learning programme. Um, finally, we also want to develop collaborative links between ourselves um, and Norway um, in prison officer education. Um, and the reason I mention Norway is because they are world leaders, um, international best practice in prison, um, prison service delivery and in prison officer education as well. And we want to build upon links that are already there between ourselves and our Norwegian partners. Um, I'll pass you on to Fanula. Uh, so how will we go about it? Um, so initially, the first phase of the project is to do a skills needs analysis. Now, as Carl was saying, we have um, up to 30 staff delivering on it. Um, people are coming, you know, the, the form has identified four different types of learning. So you have leading, mentoring, uh, consolidating learning, new learning. It's like people are on different phases of that spectrum in terms of their blended, in terms of reflective practice, whether they've engaged with that previously. So what we want to look at is where are people coming from to identify a skills, a skills needs analysis tool, to use that, to implement that, and find out what our lecturers uh, feel that their needs are and our tutors. Um, then to include students with that, uh, Colin's a class rep. We now have, we have quite small groups coming through uh, between 18 and 24 students and each one of those groups has a class rep so we have 12 class reps currently and each of the groups coming through will have class reps that's I suppose they have self-selected as uh, we Colin and others don't like the word champion but uh, to associates that they would be representative then on the project um, but I suppose being realistic in terms of the amount of people delivering what we would hope and I have in phase two the identifying of TNL associates that if we got three or four students if we got three or four members of Irish prison service staff and three or four members of WIT staff to sign up for a learning contract that they would then create be those persons be those associates that we could start with sustainability we're obviously at a, a kind of younger phase in our project than the other ones i've listened to this morning where they're following on so really what we want to try and do is to, to begin this community of practice by identifying who those associates are so for example i deliver on a learning to learn module that i could create a portfolio of resources both online and in the classroom that i could give to somebody else who comes in to deliver that and they won't be at the same point i was when i came on the program um, so the phase one identifying the needs, phase two, planning and implementation. That idea of looking at international best practice, there isn't a consensus internationally on how we train prison service staff. So looking at how they're doing it elsewhere, looking at how, <clears throat> excuse me, how we can, I mean, we have a duty of care. You can hear from the numbers. There was a moratorium in the Irish prison service for 10 years. Nobody was hired. So this is an opportunity now to create a cultural shift, to move towards a philosophy of lifelong learning, also towards digitization. The system, how did you describe to me yesterday, Colin, when I had been in Midlands prison and looking at uh, 
clothes and every prisoner's clothes and how that's documented and stored and it is like out of Hogwarts there is a huge book but there is a computer beside the book and what were you telling me is the rationale <laughs> for keeping the book beside the computer uh, do you want to deal with both generations I would think yes yeah <laughs> yeah and yesterday you were describing it is that if the book got up and walked out the door or at least if the computer got up and walked out the door the book couldn't follow it so do you know that kind of resistance that people described earlier exists obviously in every domain of life and it certainly exists in the prison service so that we have an opportunity now to switch to a digitization within the service <coughs> by embedding that in the training in the HCCC um, looking, certainly, we would love to create links with Norway to share some teaching resources and practice. That would be brilliant if, if that happened down the line. Um, creating links there. Um, and evaluation and planning. And I know we come to that part later in terms of asking students now what their experience is, asking them afterwards, what is your experience now? Um, I'm going to hand over to Julie just to talk a little bit about who that student is. <coughs> So we have two types of learners. We obviously have our tutors and our lecturers, but then we have our student learners. And just to give you an idea about who they are, um, they are not really traditional entrants into higher education. Um, they generally, the highest level of educational attainment by 75%, almost 75% would be the Leaving Certificate. So they wouldn't be people who maybe naturally would uh, go into higher education. So this programme allows them to engage in higher education and obviously we want to encourage them in terms of lifelong learning. The average age is 32, so a lot of them have been out of education for quite some time. And as you can see, it's 9 out of 10 would be males and this is 2017 figures, although we are starting to see an increase in the females into the service. Um, it's important to note in terms of digital competence, which is a big topic, and we've mentioned that a moment ago, we have 51% have described themselves as only basic users, um, 43 as independent, and 6 only as proficient. So this programme will allow us to enhance their digital competence as well. And also in terms of, because they're a, a non-traditional entrance, because they have been out of education for quite some time, by building our teaching capacity and coming up with innovative ways of teaching and looking at learning styles, this will allow us to target different types of learners and to increase the educational, hopefully, the impact of that education on our, on our students. I'm going to pass you over to Fanula just to talk about um, our proposal. Just to kind of back, I was looking, we're proposal type three, so it's a small program based uh, proposal. And I just pulled out the words out of that proposal type uh, and put it in with the prison uh, service values. And I suppose, it, like, we owe a great debt of uh, gratitude to the prison service. It, it's a kind of unspoken about profession. And, it, we, you know, and it's to the benefit of, of all of society. So we have an opportunity now and a duty of care, really, to to create this teaching and learning experience for prison officers going forward in their careers that is a meaningful experience that we can improve the prison service um, and the provision of that. No, sorry, I had another point I wanted to make there. Um, yeah, it's really just around that, this safer society and also the professionalisation of prison service um, and that role that prison officers can feel and do feel um, a pride and recognition in their role um, and that we contribute to that in terms of the reflective practice and our involving the student and the prison officers who obviously are going back in. That's our sustainability when our prison officers are going into service um, and coming back as trainers. Um, the trainers who were delivering with me at the moment, my colleagues uh, from the Irish Prison Service, are seconded for three years. So there's a turnover there which allows an opportunity for feeding that back into service and that, that philosophy. Um, Sorry, Julie, you're back up again. We're just talking about uh, impact and sustainability. <coughs> I didn't realise we'd be sitting, sitting down, standing up. <laughs> so um, Fanula has obviously mentioned, uh, tapped in there to impact, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. So the development of the new resources and the uh, teaching methods and the stable community of practice will ensure that the impact of this project lives on long after it concludes. Um, as mentioned previously, recruitment will continue for another six years at least um, at a rate of about 200 prison officer, recruit prison officers per year. So by by improving the teaching, which improves the uh, learner experience, which hopefully increases the professionalisation of the service, which ultimately, as we've said, we want to create safer communities. Um, and in terms of also, we want to identify associates or champions or people amongst our tutoring team and our, and, and our lecturers, but also in terms of students who will really promote lifelong learning and will encourage others going forward to engage in lifelong learning in the service. And because we have that turnover of tutors that go from tutors back into the prison service, 
we're hoping to continue that process back into the prisons and have that multiplier effect. Um, and I've also mentioned, obviously, embedding the practice to the mentoring and resources. So we want to come up with innovative ways. We want to encourage our tutors to become, and our teachers, to become more confident in the use of different teaching methodologies and to bring that into their service and to promote that within the prison service. Um, and we also want to, obviously, integrate the learner voice. We have Colin here representing the students are our learners um, in terms of RPOs. We want to encourage that and we want to ensure that our project really hits the nail on the head in terms of the type of learning and the way that they want to learn. And then finally, um, the learning will go back into the prisons as well in terms of our tutors going back in and having that impact uh, across the prison service as well. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>